Hello, you ladies and lasses. It's Mary Beth Eversol here. The luck of the Irish is with us today to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Why does everyone go nuts on St. Patrick's Day? Why? Why does everyone drink and eat so much and like all that stuff? Um, well, here's the answer. So, uh, right now, Lent is happening. Lent is the part of the Christian faith when you are restricting things you might eat or you know bad habits, whatever you're you're restricting it for uh, many days. I think 40 days um, from Shrove Tuesday through Good Friday. <clears throat> so about halfway through is St. Patrick's Day, and so the church decided, well, these people are going to go crazy if they don't have just at least one day where they can lift those restrictions and have some fun. So guess what? St. Patrick's Day is the day. They lifted the restrictions. Now, guess what happens when you have a whole bunch of people who've had restricted things for about 20 days, and then you lift the restrictions for one day, and then you have to go back to the restrictions the next day. That's right, you guessed it. They drink, they eat, and they're merry, and then we party all day long, and there's parades, and there's celebrations, and everyone wears green and kisses people, and blah, blah, blah. So there you have it. That is the history. Now, I would like to talk a little bit more about shepherd's pie and why it's called that, but let's get to the ingredients first. So for those of us that cannot lift our restrictions any day because it might not be good for us, here are the ingredients for our shepherdless pie. This is uh, supposed to be one large carrot diced. I decided to use, I had smaller carrots, so I did uh, smaller multicolored carrots equivalent to one large diced carrot. Then there's two uh, chopped celery stalks, one yellow onion finely chopped, here are 800 grams, that is right, I said 800 grams, which is equivalent to 6 and 2 thirds cups of Yukon Gold potatoes. We have almond milk, vegetable broth, you could also use chicken broth if, if you're okay with that. This is supposed to be diced sieved tomatoes. Now I cheated and used a can and that's all I have, so it kind of looks like that instead of actual diced tomatoes, but that's okay. Uh, you can usually just use regular diced tomatoes. I would say um, you need a cup, so I'd go for two diced tomatoes, put them through a fine mesh sieve or a fine mesh uh, a strainer and keep the tomatoes. I'm good there. Uh, two cloves of garlic that will eventually be crushed. We have two eggs and we're just going to use the yolks. I've decided to use the vegan cheddar today. As you all know, I am okay with goat cheese, but I just decided to go for the vegan cheddar today. Uh, this is a great brand for that. Um, the recipe also calls for vegetable oil. However, most vegetable oils have corn, and I am allergic to that. So I have opted for olive oil. And then you have your sun-dried tomato pesto. Most pestos have cheese in them, and this one is no exception, except for the fact that this has goat's cheese in it. Yes! I was so excited when I found this. Um, normally pesto has parmesan in it, which I can't have, but goat's cheese, yes, I can. So exciting. Um, if you cannot tolerate that, go ahead and just go for the regular sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. So then we also have thyme and butter. There is a bay leaf that we will be using. And over here, I have already prepared for you dried cooked lentils. You can choose to do it that way, and here's how you do it. Or you can choose to take the easy route and opt for a 14 ounce can of lentils. That's the ingredients, on to the main event. So uh, next step, there's a lot of things you have to do all at once. Uh, that is, turn on your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit so that it gets preheated. You are going to put your olive oil or your oil into a fairly large pan and uh, dump your onions in. You're going to cook your onions for about one to two minutes and then you're going to add some other ingredients. I'll show you that in a second. And meanwhile, you also want to fill a pot with water that's salted with your potatoes so that you can get that boiling and cook your potatoes down so you can make mashed potatoes. I have added my uh, onions. I cooked those down till they were translucent. And now I've added my carrots, my celery, and my crushed garlic. And you wanna cook those for about two more minutes um, until they are starting to soften. 
And while we're waiting for that to happen, here's a good time for me to tell you why. It's called shepherd's pie or cottage pie or shepherdless pie. Uh, so shepherd's pie and cottage pie have been used interchangeably and uh, came about like in the 1600s basically. Um, cottage pie came about because people were starting to use potatoes back then and uh, became a, a staple crop and they were looking for any way to put potatoes in something so it wasn't just potatoes. So we're like, ooh, good idea, let's put meat in there and make it a filling and put potatoes on top while they're smashed. And so um, they decided, and this was a lot of the poorer people were doing this, and the uh, poorer people back then lived in cottages, so it became known as cottage pie. Um, and it also usually was had beef in it. Shepherd's pie normally has lamb in it, thus the word shepherd because the shepherd herds the sheep. Oh, and then, then in more recent years came about the vegetarian pot pie, or in my case, vegetarian friendly, allergy friendly pot pie, and they started calling that the shepherdless pot pie. Oh, see what they did there, yeah. Okay. So this is going to cook down for just a couple more minutes, and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. Next thing we do is we put two tablespoons of that pesto, or remember if you can't do the pesto, do the sun-dried tomatoes and olive oil. That is two tablespoons. Dump it in, peeps. There you go. And you're also going to put the uh, diced sieve tomatoes. It's also called tomato passata. Uh, and then you're going to put a bay leaf. Uh, and that's a single bay leaf, by the way. In, boom. Ooh, bay leaf smell good. And then you've got your thyme. And then you've got your stock. There you go. <laughs> and then you stir it. And it looks so good. And you want to bring it up to um, a simmer. And you're going to simmer it for 15 minutes. And while that's going on, your potatoes are also going to be cooking. Hopefully this water gets to a boil soon. Uh, and then we will be mashing the potatoes. So this is cooked down for 15 minutes. We're going to take the bay leaf out because that's not tasty to eat. Ugh. And uh, you put the lentils in. Remember, Three and a third cups or 400 grams. Stir it up. Season it. My power has gone out. So stir it up. Season it with salt and pepper. And uh, then you're going to transfer it to the baking dish. So my potatoes are done. So now I'm going to mash them. <laughs> required people. Okay, so with that you're going to add your other ingredients to these mashed potatoes. You are going to do the butter, the milk, the egg yolks, and the cheese. And you're going to put it all in here and mix it together and then you're going to put it over there and on top of the thing. Here are the mashed potatoes with the butter, the milk, the egg yolks, and the cheese all mixed in with the potatoes. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Uh, and then here are the lentil, like filling, is the lentil filling mixture. So that's the before. And here is the after. Pop this in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees until it's bubbling and a little bit brown around the edges, and then you get to taste it. Alright, here we go. It's hot. Ah, ah, ah. Yes! That was really good. Okay? Have fun making your shepherd slash cottage slash shepherdless allergy friendly pie for your friends or yourself anytime in the near future, maybe around St. Patrick's Day. And uh, this is allergy actress Mary Beth Eversole, signing off till next time.